Today we're going to experiment with one of the cheapest and most versatile DIY materials I use. It's called surface bonding cement and we're going to use it to make landscaping boulders, hanging planters, pendant lights, and even, and perhaps most importantly, a home for our squirrel friend, Gary. Quickwall surface bonding cement has a whole bunch of applications. I have used it on a lot of large scale outdoor projects and it's basically a super strong cement plaster that has fibers integrated into it so you don't need any additional reinforcement. I wanted to see if I could coat a balloon with it without adding any additional reinforcement. So I mixed in some water until the quick wall was about the consistency of super lumpy oatmeal. From here, I just started spreading it on the balloon. I used my hands to pack on a layer just about 3 eighths of an inch thick. The balloon is a little bit tricky since it has some flex to it, but what was really easy was covering a cheap plastic bowl. After letting it cure for about 30 minutes, I used a putty knife just to trim around the edges. That's one of the things I like about this product is that you can work with it at various stages and keep adding a little bit more or smoothing it out. If you have a hot glue gun, you can basically take any plastic bottles or packaging or cheap dishes that you might get from a thrift store and glue them together to make molds that you then plaster over. I'm working on a new house in Joshua Tree and I thought that the rough plaster look would be great for a desert aesthetic. This is incredibly easy. Just hot glue some stuff together and then coat it with a plaster that's as strong as reinforced concrete. I let the first coat on the balloon sit for about eight hours and then turned it over and started covering the rest of it. While the second batch of plaster was curing, I started working on the house for my squirrel, Gary. I was thinking of something sort of Star Wars themed, so I took a plastic mixing bowl and just duct taped on a disposable plastic cup. I then added a half inch thick layer of quick wall over the top of everything and what's awesome is that I can just use my hands to kind of smooth in between the cup and the bowl. I went back to the balloon and added more quick wall. This is the point where it can get a little bit tricky because if you push really hard, the balloon can push on the plaster that you already applied and crack it. So you have to be kind of gentle or let the layers of plaster fully cure before adding the next layer. I popped the balloon and applied a little bit more plaster around the opening and then another thin about, I don't know, quarter inch thick coat on top of everything to smooth all the layers together. It's really nice because if the shape doesn't quite look like what you want it to or there's a crack in between the layers that you applied, you can just add another layer over the top and it bonds them all together. The synthetic fibers in the mix are what give it its strength. But if you don't like the way they look when they kind of poke through here and there on the surface, you can just use a lighter or a blowtorch to just burn them away. Then about 10 seconds of sanding removes the burn marks. I've used this product to make landscaping boulders before and this certainly would be a good place to hide a spare key under, but I'm interested to see if I can turn it into a hanging planter. So I just took some cheap twine and made a loop that I could then attach to three strings so that I can hang this, I don't know, about seven pound object. I added a second and final coat to the two lamps and to the plastic bowl molds. For one of these bowls, I thought it would be interesting to actually see if I could embed some wire in between the layers. So I just twisted some loops, placed them on the first coat, and then added a second coat of quick wall over the top. I don't use a release agent on the plastic. I just pull it right off. Now sometimes the cement plaster can go over the edge of the bowls. So I just have to scrape it out a little bit before using some needle nose pliers to pull the bowls right out. When removing the inner mold, I accidentally poked a hole in one of the pendant lamps, but no problem, I can just patch this right up. The edges of the bowls were a little bit rough looking, so I just took some additional plaster and smoothed over the edges. The hanging planters look great, and they'll be an excellent addition to the outdoor garden that I'm currently working on. There's a few different ways you can shape the plaster after you mold it. While it's still curing, you can cut it with a putty knife. Once it's fully cured, I like to shape it with an angle grinder and either a diamond blade if I'm doing a straight cut, or a 40 grit flap disc. It just grinds right down. 
I like the idea of mixing a shiny metallic with the rough plaster. So I spray painted the insides of the bowls and one of the lamps with some fusion all-in-one spray paint in metallic gold. Once that gold spray paint dried, I just put the bowls back in and spray painted everything white. For the larger pendant lamp, I spray painted the inside gloss sunbeam. And check out how strong this quick wall product is. There's no metal reinforcement in here. It's just about three quarters to an inch thick of plaster. And obviously it's really strong as a cone, but here's the part that I actually think is impressive. Standing on the side of a shape like this that has a hole drilled in the end is pretty cool. It's about as easy to drill through as a cinder block, so I just started with a smaller pilot hole before drilling in a larger hole so I could feed the wires that I got from colorcord.com through the top to wire up the lamp. Now I prefer things that are a little more streamlined and slick looking, but out here in the desert people love this kind of handmade plaster stuff and get really good money for it, so to each their own. But I do love me some Star Wars, and Gary definitely needs a new house. Jessie built them a little mini house over at her place, but we need something here at Maker Ranch for them to chill in. So I added another coat of quick wall, and to finish this home, I wanted to try something a little different to really smooth out the top. So I just added some joint compound that was pre-mixed and typically used for drywall applications, and I just basically frosted it like a cake using my hands. And unlike a cementitious plaster, this plaster sands really easy, so it didn't take too long to sand it down and smooth everything all out. Gary seems to like his new house, although his motivation might be primarily peanuts. And very quickly, the much larger and meaner pirate squirrel moved in and tried to get in on the action. But Gary is quick and sly and quickly reclaimed the throne. If you want to see more misadventures from our various animals, be sure to follow my sister Jessie on Instagram. She does a really good job documenting their daily lives. We've been experimenting by building them their own kind of little garden playground area where we can feed them. And although it's resulted in a few turf wars, they, they seem to enjoy it overall. I'll put links to some of the larger projects that we've used Quick Wall on. And if you're interested in the other concrete products that I use, be sure to go to quickcrete.com. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.